So, um, first of all, uh, we would like to invite Pak uh, uh, Saputra maybe to introduce a little bit our about BBPT and our center. Please, uh, Pak Hens. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, uh, what we meet in the sharing session even and uh, thank you very much for GFE Engineering Corporation for the day, especially uh, you Henry uh, team. Uh, thank you for the uh, speaker uh, today. And actually related with our program, energy process and chemical industry, uh, we have the uh, activity to develop uh, and make technology, especially in energy resources and we have uh, the engineering team this is the one of the key programs uh, to perform our uh, uh, our duty, especially to uh, build the uh, technology in Indonesia uh, from the uh, lab scale, band scale, and upgrade to uh, pilot plan. Then uh, the technology will. Uh, in the market, especially uh, we make the operation with the industry. And on the other hand, we have the recommendation of energy for the government, the industry, and the community. So I think this uh, sharing system is very important for us. Um, we can make the uh, cooperation in the there are some programs in our center, uh, the development of uh, integrated uh, uh, technology, uh, is the productivity of salt uh, in Indonesia. Uh, at the same time, we have to increase the quality of the salt uh, to reach the industrial grade or practical or uh, pro rate. And in uh, other program, we have the development of technology for uh, uh, development of biogas. Uh, biogas from uh, OMI, or palm oil uh, milk effluents in the in Rio, yeah. we have the pilot plan of hotel. Um, and other program, we uh, develop the technology of uh, petrochemicals, uh, oil and gas, and uh, fertilizer, especially the slow release fertilizer. And, uh, here, uh, there is the research group about the Clean coal technology. Uh, I think how to uh, utilize the huge amount of uh, coals in the mine, so uh, we can make uh, the technology to increase the quality or develop the uh, specification products such as the chemicals. Fine chemicals. Uh, I think uh, that's all uh, the program in uh, our center. Uh, some of the staff uh, attending this uh, event and nice discussion. Thank you very much, Wasim, for the opportunity. 
for tim media and uh, program and all of the uh, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Pak Hans, for the introduction. Um, actually, maybe just to visualize a little bit about you, this is the first time to hear or to know about VPT. Shall I share just a little bit um, as some slides? Um, just to introduce you, to show you uh, yes. in a visual form, maybe. Mohon um, izin, Pak Hens, maaf. So this is a little just brief introduction about BBPT. Um, just like Pak Hens already mentioned, so we are in the, I'm sorry, this is in Indonesian though. So um, this is um, an application application and assessment of technology uh, uh, we were found in 1978 and the founder our founding father is uh, one of the former president of indonesia professor habibi and our head office is in jakarta in uh, mh tamrin and here uh, uh, our department here located in south tangerang or serpong Pospitek. It's a uh, sense and technology um, located here. So not only BBPT, but we also have LIPI, maybe you ever heard, and some other research institutes who are also located in this uh, area, Pospitek area. So um, here are, we have very diverse uh, technology field. Actually, we have industrial engineering, material, defense, ICT, uh, um, and then geosystem as well as energy and agro-world and our office is not just here in Tangerang Selatan but we also in, have in other cities such as Bali and then Surabaya, Lampung, uh, not in all city in Indonesia but just a few. So um, our this is the role of PPPT. Our role is uh, assessment and application of technology consisting of engineering, intermediation, or uh, the uh, and then um, the technology clearing to select which technology is the best to be applied in Indonesia, for example. And then a technology audit is also our field. And then solution of technology, diffusion of technology, uh, commercialization, we also uh, support. So in the form of innovation or technology service. So innovation means we create the technology by uh, ourselves, or I mean, collaborate the service. We usually have partners, uh, for example, uh, they need us to help them to do yeah, uh, selection. Konstruksi atau instalasi dan termasuk itu sama pengujian yang langsung, Pak. Excuse me? Oh, okay. Um, I couldn't catch what was it. Okay, anyway, so this is the technology service we can also do uh, to help our partners. And then um, we can nation advocation, technology transfer, consultation, and so on. Uh, and the focus or the purpose is to support, especially, uh, of course, Indonesia uh, for the prosperity of Indonesia. So maybe that. A little bit. So this, our we have around 2,000 employees in BBPT. So it's quite a big organization. But here I am. Uh, I put uh, red color for our department. Here is this one, uh, Center for Energy and Chemical Industry. We also have the uh, how to say. <laughs> I forgot what is it in English. Um, so uh, focusing, working on uh, fuel and engineering design. So we are under the deputy for technology of information, energy and material. So uh, we are just a one uh, part, a uh, small part of UVT actually. So um, as, as a government agency, we are very much motivated to work with industry like maybe JFE and, and also uh, in universities, community, and uh, of course, media. Now it's very important for us to also, uh, how to say, uh, do campaign and then educate uh, the society through media. So maybe that's a very uh, brief explanation about BPT in general. And then regarding the activities in our center, we call it PTSI in Indonesian. Pak Hans already mentioned several, so I'll just show you the pictures. 
uh, also this part our our field is uh, sorry it's in all Indonesian so our field is coal petrochemical and oil and gas is also our field uh, we have also biogas technology from POME I think this one very related with the one that Pat Yul Henry maybe will share today so we develop Cafe Lagoon as well as CSTR and we also have some team who are working on biohydrogen production and then for bioenergy, we have several experience regarding this uh, topic. And then our uh, our main program uh, at this moment is the salt garam. This one is salt industry. Uh, integrated salt industry is uh, uh, our main program here in in Petasek that we are working on right now. So oh, regarding the coal, we also have a technology gasification and upgrading, coal upgrading, and we also have uh, some team who experience in syn gas, producing syn gas uh, and, uh, from biomass. And then we also have a team who experience in uh, recycling the oh, sorry, we use oil yeah, as fuel. Um, maybe later, if you are interested, you can also ask more about this. These are the pictures. This is the biogas plant we have in Riau uh, province. And then this is the pilot plant gasification here in Tangerang Selatan. And this one is Garam or salt, uh, industrial salt uh, pilot plant we have in West, uh, sorry, East Java in Gresik. <clears throat> Maybe that's all. I, I think I should not uh, use pa, you Henry's time today. So this is just to show now, you. Ms. Yeah. Novi, hi, yeah. this is Tommy here. Can I yeah. just ask one question? Yeah, please. Um, so is BPPT involved in funding of the projects? Oh, maybe later Pat Hans can answer more, but as for me, um, we do have our budget, but usually we already have mandated. We already have uh, the program that we have to do with that budget. Other than that, um, we sometimes join the competition, you know, to get the funding from some funding organization. Uh, and we compete and then get the funding from that organization, then we do the program, the project. Uh, other than that, we sometimes receive or welcome, uh, as we call it, technology service from uh, uh, from companies, from government, from any who needs to use our service, uh, which means uh, in that case, that will be a special project that usually in a, in a let me frankly saying, we will get paid. <laughs> I mean, um, we will get the budget from outside party to do that project because it's a special project. It's additional work that we have to do. Yeah. Is that okay. clear for you? Maybe Pat Hans can add uh, some more information regarding yes, the, uh, the information from um, Bano. Um, that uh, we have the okay. innovation program from but for the uh, technology services uh, we uh, we have the from our partner hmm. yes right um as pa you henry also uh finally contacted me because he got a recommendation from our partner who uh, who at this moment we are helping them to do some study. So in that case, uh, we receive the job, the work request from our partner. Maybe that can uh, uh, give you some description of how we manage uh, budget. Is that okay, uh, Mr. Somya? Yes, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> okay. Okay then. So, shall we move to to the um, sharing session, the presentation uh, from now on? Um, Mr. Yu Henry, are you ready? Oh, Nafi. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. So before before you start, uh, I have to introduce uh, okay. to the audience today about. Uh, how can we call you? Can can I call you Pa Henry? <laughs> Is it short? Because uh, it's no problem. My, my many people may have a same name Henry. Some prefer they have to call me in more specific. Uh, Yul is okay. Uh, pa Yul, okay. Yeah. Pa yeah. Yul, yeah. okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we have our special guest or a special speaker to talk about the cutting edge in engineering in energy and environmental field JFE experience, especially uh, in the field of waste heat recovery and pome biogas. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, we, here we have also our colleagues who are working in the same field, uh, waste heat recovery and pome biogas. So I hope today's discussion will be very interesting for all of us. So, um, uh, Mr. Yul Henry Saputra is a marketing professional from G uh, JFE Engineering Indonesia. So here is his uh, CV. Let me read just some part of it. So he is a qualified tenure management for leading and execution of the company's value for long term and short term direct liaison to the board, management staff, government, authority, public and stakeholder. He graduated um, from a Master of Business uh, Administration from Germany and then uh, ma Magister Management in Business Engineering in SGU in Sarpo and then Bachelor Degree from uh, Industrial Engineering Universitas Islam in Islam Indonesia, Indonesia. Yeah, Yogyakarta yeah. in 1997. So he has so uh, many experiences, especially in the field of um, a marketing business opportunity uh, in renewable energy power plan. I'm not sure this is HRSG geothermal. Yes, yeah, same. Uh, WTE, etc., and uh, collaborate with uh, different um, of work. Sorry, through headquarter, yeah, pa, yeah, in Japan, yeah. India, and then Germany using uh, this different scheme on also JCM interesting and others and then uh his ex work experience he also ever heard for uh, ever worked for PT Era Energy Konstruksindo in Jakarta and then uh, previously he worked for PT Jacob Sinclair Nightmares Merge Jakarta <laughs> okay yeah. so maybe that's all I think but uh, you can share yeah. more about himself uh, later so uh please but you maybe you can uh try to share screen okay um let me try so uh okay uh can you see my screen yes very clear uh first of all thank you very much for coffee and also pa hen saputra um and everybody from bbpt um i believe you have introduce our company uh, i mean our personal there is um mr somya actually from jfe india i also have i should have uh, one more mr susan but he's from japan he cannot join because mm. somehow he has other urgent meetings okay let, let me make it most uh, efficient so let me introduce about JFE engineering okay um, this is the group structure of JB Engineering. Our company group based in Yokohama, Japan. The, there are three big um, in business of the group. One is JB Engineering. It consists around um, maybe 8,000 of employee and we have the biggest one is JP still they have around 43,000 employees so the main business of JP in Japan is um, uh, for we are like Jakarta uh, still in Indonesia and then we have another uh, sister company Fuji Trip you may have around 6,000 uh, employee uh, of course, we have a uh, uh, Japan Marine unit. unit. It's around 6,000 employees. This is the entirely uh, JP group. Yeah, JP group. If we talk about the business field, so we have got from water fortification, beach water and gas pipeline 
and we have a glass water trip agriculture solar lng and then uh sorry uh waste incinerator gas engine biogas so many many things that jv have having for the major major project and for the global network this is entire in the world uh, branch in europe we have um, in the Middle East, we have in China, America, and Asia. For Asia, this one you see here, we, we put the bracket for Pune. Pune for a concentration of waste heat recovery. So the technology for waste heat recovery actually owned by JPA Japan. But in Indonesia, sorry, in 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 in, in Asia, uh, uh, Japan assigned JFE India to lead waste heat recovery. And then for uh, Jakarta, we have office in Menara Sentraya, yeah, Block M, and just to give. Uh, clear picture for Sonia actually the PPT office is in Serpong Sonia is only 15 minutes from my house mm. so Sonia ever come to our client here in Serpong and then uh, for JV in Indonesia there is two entity one is JFA Engineering Indonesia, and then the other is JFA Engineering Corporation. So JFA Engineering Corporation, most of the people is marketing people. We work closely with headquarters in Japan, in Germany, in India, to bring the technology. But PT JFA Engineering, basically is EPC, who doing the construction, procurement, and engineering. Okay, this is the project that we, major project that we have in Indonesia. We have made a 270 kilometers pipeline, we call SSWJ, from South Sumatra to West Java is owned by PGM, across from Sumatra Selatan, yeah, to West Java, two inch. We also doing the PGM, 31 kilometers project in Kalisoko, Waru, and also in Lamongan, 11.5 kilometers. JFA also doing the geothermal in Katuha, this is owned by Geodipa, I think you, you know, there's uh, also on enterprise. Uh, this is the interesting one, the biggest, not the biggest, but the first waste head recovery. We built in Padang, cement Padang. The waste heat recovery can produce 8.5 megawatt. And then we have also the waste recovery in cement uh, 2019, so 32 megawatt. JV Engineering PT Indonesia, we also construct the new plant for uh, cow Indonesia. This is a giant. We also support for Asahi Kesi in Jurong Island, Singapore. Also doing construction for lubricant oil blending, this one, and also the Idibisu for lube oil blending. Okay, now let's have a specific to the waste recovery that we would like to share with uh, BPPT. The waste recovery is the main, uh, is the main project that 
will be ever built. I, I mentioned him before, and cement to ban to 2019 we completed. Why this waste recovery is important for JB? We believe this is a green. This can reduce the CO2 emission footprint. Yeah, especially because uh, Japan, Indonesia also signed off the Paris uh, Agreement or Kyoto Protocol. So every reduce the CO2 footprint. And then the second important is OPEX saving because you don't need to have fuel. Yeah, because we just take you just recover from the heat that they throw to the to the air and then use it. And then also the space saving. <clears throat> this is no no space for fuel storage. Yeah, system. Why we have to uh, we have to choose the JFE for the waste heat recovery? For four reasons that technically we have to consider. Number one, the boiler design. Number two is number one is boiler design. Number two is turbine design. The three is the dust management, and then the facility. Let's see how uh, important this uh, waste heat recovery from JB. The SP boiler that we have, uh, basically we talk about the conventional, we talk about the dust. It's a big problem for especially cement industry. Yeah, it can redu reduce the system slowly. Your, your system will be your tubes. SP boiler tube will be have a problem with the dust. And then for the Air con air con sinks uh, cooler or AQC boiler. This is easily abrasion uh, to the tubes because of water leakage. And also have a big maintenance cost. This is the big reason why we in technical left side the other technology where people designed by using horizontal tube types. You see the, how the gas flow from, from the top go out or to the bottom. So JV design, yeah, the simple preheater, we use vertical tube types. Okay, you see how from go to the left side. Okay, this is can minimize the dust uh, this position and increase the system efficiency. This is why we have different against others. And then you see uh, us, we have a hammering system to the SP boiler design. This is can have high durable structure because your dust will be removed from your uh, system. Talk about the AQC boiler. As I mentioned in before, easily to have leakage and it will cause the pressure loss and become expensive boiler tube for maintenance. Passive clinker dust cause erosion. That's why this um, important for JV. For the IQ boiler design, we have a high performance dust settling chamber and then uniform gas flow. We Tyler made arrangement and thin. Okay, this is uh, how we for the um, uh, air quenching cooler, the AQC boiler. This is a typical design. Yeah, how our waste recovery we build and also in cement gasi. Sorry, cement gasi actually belong our uh, cement to actually belong to cement in Indonesia. But for cement padang, they are they independently, but not under cement in Indonesia. Sorry, cement padang also cement uh, under cement in Indonesia. 
Okay, let's see how the experience that we have. We have very how we build total 285 boilers around the world. We produce from waste heat recovery 820 megawatt. Very important for green. Green, um, yeah, uh, gas house problem. We have a uh, four boiler we install for cement, uh, two cement, two for cement and two for boilers in Europe. We have India one. In China, we install 42 boilers. In Japan, we have 200, more than 200. In, in Taiwan, we have 12. In Asia, we have Southeast Asia, 13, 13 boilers and then North America, two boilers. This is the list how we see for the past 20 years, continuously construct the recovery since 1982. And you see the bracket green color, repeated order where the same client keep asking to construct. You, so you see, uh, even from Padang 2011, until now, still operate and can produce uh, electricity around 8.2 megawatt. I mentioned to you, Cement Padang, very big. The SP boiler we make two, uh, and then AQC boiler one, it would be in turbine generator one. Yeah, we commissioned it in 2011. Until now, still operate. And this is the, what installation, new installation that they have done at JFP Tan. In cement Padam, AQC boiler, cooling tower, the house, kiln. And then for cement in as I mentioned to you, this is. 30 uh, megawatt, yeah, 30,000 kilowatt. We install SP boiler four unit, AQC boiler four unit, and STG one unit, turbine generator. So you see how very uh, that we have done with cement in Indonesia, in the plant in cement Tuban. This is by JP. And beside the the recovery for cement plant, we also have uh, solution concepts. Uh, but this uh, more specific with engine. Okay, and then uh, Turbine receipt solution key feature. Uh, the important engine efficiency. The boiler design will accept table limits. And then no engine downtimes. Easy for construction. Uh, for automation, manpower requirement. And can use the organic range. In making. Yeah. I think so. in general that, that's uh, for technical matters. I don't know. Do you need to know as well about the the ACM? I think uh, BPPT know I I think know for JCM because um we are a Japanese company. One of the um advantage that JFB have as a Japanese, we uh, government of Japan give a subsidy for a project that can reduce carbon emission. Uh, so JCM is newly support, financial support that given by the uh, Japan government. Uh, I don't know, do, do, no, do we know I need to present us for the uh, waste recovery. Uh, sorry, JCM. What, what? 
What do you think? I think that will be a very good permission. Uh, we have in BBPT, I mean, we have some people who are, who work on JCM, but they are not in our department. But I think it's it's for some people here. Maybe it's not we are not really familiar with JCM. So if you share, it will be a good uh, information for us. <clears throat> like give me um, maybe another five minutes to share with all of you. Oh, okay. Uh, share, share, share. Okay. Uh, JCM, we, we stand for Joint Credit Mechanism. Okay, this is initiated by uh, Japanese government the United Nations for the frame of convention on the climate change. This is a bilateral corporation, meaning uh, cooperate with two countries, Indonesia and, and Japan. For example, for Semen Indonesia Tuban, that support by the JMF, yeah, through the uh, environment uh, Minister of Japan. Okay, then this is how the system works, the basic framework. There's a left side, the Japanese government, the right side, the host country. It may come from Indonesia, may come from India, all, all around the world. The technology may come from Japanese uh, companies, and they will give you support financial. Yeah. This is of leading low carbon technology. Jadi ini me, dimaksudkan mengurang, membantu mengurangi emisi karbon. Yeah. Low carbon technology, implementing of mitigation action, and contributing to the ultimate objective of UN. Uh, this is benefit of JCM for the host country introduction of advanced Japanese low carbon technology to achieve sustainability and then for subsidy for the part of investment cost. Government of Japan will give subsidy for the investment cost, but not entirely uh, of the expenditure capex. But may have for the highest and highest uh, subsidy main main uh, technology may reach until fifty percent. The lowest thirty percent, and then. Japan uh, successful to offset because they signed the the Paris Agreement or Kyoto Protocol, yeah. And then dissemination technology keep the low carbon for the environment reduction of the greenhouse gas emission, and then for tracking of climate change. How the support scheme? Here yeah, the scheme uh, by in the left side corner, left bottom, by M O E G, Minister of Environment Japan. Disbursement maximum. Three years. So the project should not should not more than three years. It can be given for private sector for the project. Uh, specifically for low carbon emission project yeah. it should not only for state-owned enterprise except for the private company as well. how this uh, um, monitoring monitoring means if the project already completed we may need to report to government japan is continuously working 
in this example or in this typical, uh, you have this, for example, is nine years. We have to collect data, compare to compile the data, and then report to the uh, government of Japan. If you fail within, for example, seven years, five years, six years, seven years, then we have to return the subsidy. Meaning we cannot demolish, we cannot, we cannot stop the project for waste recovery, for example. This is the rule that we have to follow Japan government if we request subsidy from them through JCM. We have, we have, number one, we cannot defer, we cannot dispose, we cannot lease, we cannot do restricted action, we cannot uh, lease for free, we cannot exchange, we cannot take out from mortgage, or we cannot abolish. This is the rule that we have to agree if we request subsidy from Japan government. This is detailed explanation yeah, for deferred. Not deferred from the, we cannot disclose change ownership. We cannot lease, we cannot rent this waste recovery to somebody else. We cannot dispose this is for free or change the ownership. Lease for free, land for free, or exchange the property, and then take out for mortgage or abolish, stop using. We cannot do this uh, restricted. If you request from Japan government or JCM, what is the, the big stages that you have to consider? Number one, project planning. You may need to have a preliminary plan. What to do? Waste recovery, solar power, what as far as energy. Yeah, we have to follow the and then number two, project budgeting. Yeah, source the fund from client side because even you get the subsidy from uh, Japan would not have would not cover hundred percent of your project. As I mentioned to you, it could be fifty percent of your main project. And then we get we have to get the letter of intent, yeah, commitment to JVE. If we proceed to JVE, then the company um, may need to have a letter to intend to purchase or intend to construct. And then we need to make an international consortium agreement, just particularly to request this JCM subsidy. So leader Japanese entity, meaning can be any Japan company also can request to Japan government. And then apply the economic subsidy, yeah. And then got notice of subsidy word, the Japan, Japan government will give you uh, what is the subsidy. And then sign the formal contract and then subsidy disbursement at the end of fiscal year. So government will give you the, the subsidy yeah, every, every fiscal year. And then you have to continue, number nine, you have to continue report. We call MRV report that I mentioned yeah, every month you have to report like our cement to ban until now every month they have to report how many electricity that produce from waste heat recovery then government japan japan will convert that electricity to be carbon emission number of carbon emission just for your info in tuban 28 megawatt 38 30 megawatt we can produce 122,000 ton carbon to emission reduction that recorded by japan government 
and then expire of early winter. And then this is typical. Uh, I put antam because previously we talked with Bud Nofi as well. We talked with antam last year. Yeah, until they tell us last week, sorry, last month that they start to lie with uh, BPPT. How this uh, work, the, the project scheme work? If we left side the JP Japan, JP Engineering Japan in, in Japan, yeah, uh, in Yokohama. And then we'll have a consortium agreement with PT Antam, if that Antam, uh, a subsidy for Antam. And then we will come a local supply and we come for all the requirement. And for technical implementation, JBA Engineering Japan appoint for waste heat recovery to JBA Engineering India. Engineering uh, implementing waste heat recovery a business, including in Indonesia. And then JV India will design for the SP boilers, AQC, ACT, AI, engineering. For construction can be done by PT JV Engineering Indonesia. Construction. Uh, this is last, uh, what is the scope of just illustration? You see in the top JCM, there is a JPE Japan. They will apply for the JCM subsidy to the government of Japan. Then for Indonesia, there will be monitoring, reporting and validation. We call MRV. Every month we need to report to GC. GC uh, agent that may be appointed by the government Japan for this reporting. And then Antam will take care for the transportation, local construction. And then JP Engineering India will do the EP, Engineering and Procurement, and supervision by uh, JV Engineering India. This is typical that we talk with uh, Antam last time. Yeah? So it could take maybe around two years to complete the project, including application to uh, JCM Japan. So if the project start to this month, for example, so it could complete maybe by 2022. Yeah, this is just illustration how uh, um, JCM works. Um, I think that's it from my side. Uh, do you have any question? Yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Payu, for the presentation. I think um, they're very, very interesting and there are some information, um, a lot of information about JFE, which is something that we are very happy to know about. And um, including the JCM, uh, I'm a little surprised that you also present quite uh, a lot about JCM and it's uh, very interesting for us. Um, uh, and uh, we have our colleague in different department who work on JCM. Maybe next time we can connect you as well with them uh, regarding JCM. As for now, uh, related to the technical, especially we have here uh, some of our uh, colleagues who maybe can give some comments or questions uh, regarding their presentation. Um, um, before that, um, Pak Yu, um, do you have your colleague who would like to also uh, give some comments or maybe additional information from your side. Uh, yeah, I think so, so far that's it. Uh, uh, yeah. We tell all uh, all the things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I, as I remember last time when we talked, uh, Pak Yul, uh, you mentioned about the idea of collaborating between JFE as a private company with BBPT is, um, for example, uh, BBPT do the feasibility study and then a uh, private company, JFE in this case, uh, work on the EPC or the implementation of the state study, which is, I think, suitable because that's uh, also what we do. And as BBPT, as government agency, we cannot uh, directly build or construct uh, some technology uh, uh, in some uh, in some industry because that's not our uh, 
that's not our job description our job is to support and then uh, uh, by conducting some study or maybe thing during the implementation stage so in this case uh, we can call it like a owner consultant so in this case for the case of uh, example that Pak Yul mentioned, PT Antam. Uh, if if that project continue, then uh, BPPT role can be the uh, PT Antam consultant to uh, how to say to consult uh, on the implementation of the waste heat recovery technology. While JFE part, so maybe that's the description of examples of how we collaborate. And then uh, other than that, of course, we are very open to have to welcome ideas or um, propo to propose uh, some collaboration. Uh, to propose some collaboration between uh, JFE and PPT. Um, so I will let the audience to give a comment, some comments maybe for now, uh, if you have. I haven't seen any uh, questions or comments yet on the chat box here. So I would like to invite then <laughs> our senior in this case uh, to have a uh, comments, especially re related to the waste heat recovery. Uh, maybe Pak Hari, can you um, um, give some uh, thoughts, share some thoughts to us? Oh, thank you very much for the chance to on this event. I'm sorry, uh, I joined this uh, a bit late because of the uh, our meeting previous the event. Uh, about the waste heat recovery in Antam, we will do evaluation the potential of uh, heat uh, from the kiln uh, exhaust gas to heat up uh, primary air for coal milling. Yeah. In this case, uh, we will have um, benefit in replacing fuel, liquid fuel, uh, for heating during milling process by heat from exhaust gas. Uh, in this case, uh, maybe we can discuss, uh, can we use our study adopted in this uh, GCM scheme? So PT Antam will save the time to have the project uh, done more quickly. I think this is uh, maybe uh, need to be discussed this time. Yeah, thank you, Novi. Yeah, thank you. I would like to give a little comment regarding this work with Tete and um, actually, but you uh, maybe we ha we cannot really let's see since this is not really official yet <laughs> between uh, special yeah. uh, study. So maybe. Um, uh yes we can talk about it in this uh forum today it's 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 okay i think so maybe between uh the team in bbpt can share uh or maybe ask questions since let's say maybe in the future jfe will be the one who do the epc for the waste heat recovery of pt antam then what kind of uh, issues do you ask to jfe Maybe uh, as an EPC company. Maybe, um, but Harry, do you have like, um, oh, uh, beside, um, the, uh, you can also talk in Indonesia. <laughs> I mean, to uh, all of you, uh, Bapak Ibu, uh, yeah. if you would like to deliver the questions or comments in Indonesian, uh, it's okay. Uh, I will uh, help also to translate. Um, so, again, back two main topics today. The first is related specifically to the study that we hopefully conduct in the future with PT Antam related to waste heat recovery. Uh, maybe if Pak Hari and team can have, have some questions or comments related to that. And the second is 
Other than that, is there any collaboration potential between JFE and PPPT that we can do together? Maybe uh, I uh, try to guide uh, you all, Pak uh, Bu, uh, related to the topic today. Okay, so again, Pahari, uh, do you have some like a, uh, you know, thought in your mind? Uh, do you want that you may want to ask in the future for the EPC company who will do the waste heat recovery technology? Oh yeah, so uh, what yeah. we will do for Antam is uh, limited to basic engineering. Hmm. Then, uh, of course, uh, to realize that uh, there will be EPC bidding for this equipment, for this system, and uh, then, then the we we need the like uh, uh, yeah experience uh, company in EPC especially for heat recovery system. Uh, in this case, PPPT will prepare uh, like uh, from basic engineering, from this we will prepare the, like uh, bidding document to, to select uh, what uh, company that uh, can do this uh, kind of uh, modification for Antam. I don't know yet uh, whether in Indonesia or outside uh, to do this, uh, but the PPPT will give the uh, basic design for that. I think that's all to Novi that we can do. Yeah. Um, Pak Hari, ada, ada apa, uh, do you have questions specific related to the technology itself that AFE can do or cannot do, maybe? Oh, like yeah. I think. If if uh, GFE can uh, provide the uh, like uh, with heat recovery, heat exchanger, especially that has a uh, low delta P for gas side, it is very useful for us. So we can do the potential study for this recovery, heat recovery, uh, more precisely. Yeah, I think that's the, 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 what we, we need. What we need in the we, in uh, available market for heat exchanger, especially for gas to gas heat exchanger. Okay. okay, thank you, Pak Hari. So, um, Pak Yul, maybe you have comments, especially the last part uh, regarding the heat exchanger. Okay, Pak. Hari, uh, can I use some uh, sound? May I have a Bahasa? Okay. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Hi, yes. hi, Pak. Good. Yeah, Pak Hari. Yeah. Jadi, uh, saya nggak tahu ya. Typically, bagaimana FS yang dikerjakan atau basic design yang dikerjakan. Tapi dalam konteks pemahaman saya, ini ada dua rute yang mungkin harus jadi pertimbangan bagi BPPT. Pertama, Bapak, sorry, BPPT bisa saja mengingkutkan subsidi atau framework JCM ke dalam visibility yang diusulkan ke enam. Konsekuensinya pertama bahwa ada kemungkinan mendapat subsidi dari pemerintah Jepang, tapi dengan konsekuensi itu mungkin Bapak juga bisa tanya nanti ke Menko Perekonomian ya, mungkin Pak Diki yang take care di Indonesia atau mungkin ke ditambrin lah ya Pak siapa namanya lupa saya nanti saya bisa share rute itu ketika dipilih konsekuensi untuk pemilihan kandidatnya mau tidak mau harus perusahaan Jepang jadi apakah itu JFE atau mungkin saya nggak tahu yang Jepang Jepang lain ya um, kemungkinan kedua alternatif lain adalah kalau FS itu openly ditenderkan artinya bahwa ada kemungkinan dimenangkan oleh uh, non uh, teknologinya dan um, PPC-nya maka mungkin uh, 
uh, untuk mendapatkan JCM ini nya kecil nah, karena yang apply seperti penjelasan saya tadi harus ada konsorsium antara owner entity antam misalnya dengan JP Jepang bahkan JP Jepang JP bukan JP Indonesia entitinya JP yang di Jepangnya yang harus berkonsorsium jadi kalau rute itu dipilih rute JCM memang ada ini tapi konsekuensinya harus Jepang sama Jepang nah yang menjadi pertanyaan balik ke statement saya masalah ini yang menjadi concern adalah apakah antam atau BUMN itu mengizinkan untuk menunjukkan langsung saya khawatir kalau mungkin itu enggak di consider kita akan ketemu masalah komplain jadi jangan sampai nanti jadi enggak comply dengan standar BUMN, BPK dan sebagainya untuk menunjukkan langsung saya jadi mungkin kalau misalnya ada regulasi yang mengizinkan G2G misalnya dengan subsidi misalnya diizinkan untuk menunjukkan langsung ini misalnya maka mungkin akan lebih mudah sekali untuk mengerjakan FS desain dan sebagainya dan mungkin costnya jadi murah karena di subsidi ya 30 50 apex mungkin bisa berkurang gitu nah ini mungkin pilihan yang saya nggak tahu di FS nya itu sampai sedikit itu frameworknya atau hanya menyatakan visible atau tidak visible tanpa melibat tanpa mengkonsiderkan owner financingnya dari mana dan nah ini mungkin karena saya bicara sama banyak eh, BUMN ya termasuk Antam kita bicara sama semen Tonasa kita bicara sama semen Batu Raja ketika bicara tentang West Heat, mereka minta FS saya bersyukur ketemu sama BPPT. Jadi kalau mereka tanya FS, saya akan kasih kontak persen di BPPT. Kan lebih mudah ya. Tapi pertanyaan berikut, yeah. bagaimana eh, apa namanya BPPT bisa men-tackle terutama masalah compliance ketika di satu sisi kita membutuhkan subsidi dari pemerintah Jepang. Itu itu mungkin concern yang saya mungkin perlu highlight. So Uh, so Mia San, Abijit San. So basically, I explained to Pahari um, our concern if they have to, they have to build the, they have to break the feasibility study. Basically, the feasibility study may capture the JCM scheme, may or may not. But if they choose to capture the JCM schedule, by right, they only have a choice to give the job for EPC to a Japan company entity because the subsidy may come from Japan government. But if they don't consider JCM, then of course uh, they can openly to, to say feasible or not possible in, in their feasibility uh, study. That, that more I'm concerned. So yeah, uh, oh. do you have any other oh. things? Yes. No, no, but, but just to clarify. Yep. In, you don't have to face the EPC on the, the Japanese company, per se, as in, you know, for example, in the current JCM team, yep. JP India can take up the EPC. Okay. While JP Japan will facilitate the um, subsidy. Yep. So JP Japan need not, uh, you know, be placed the EPC order. Yes. The whole idea of this scheme is to bring in the competitiveness of JFE India while facilitating the subsidy from Japan. So it's the best yes. of both worlds. Yes. Okay. So to, to all the uh, audience, I just like to say that we offer the same technology, but given that we are more competitive in India, it is a uh, very, very good solution incorporating the best of technology and finances. Uh, uh, Somia, what I'm trying to say, my concern, if they choose JCM, they may need to consider Japanese company. It can come from Japan, India, JP India, JP Japan, or JP Indonesia, but they cannot choose non-Japanese company. In the yes, yes, that's true. That's true. That's what I'm that's trying true. to say. Yeah, they have to choose a Japanese, either Japan, JP India, JP Japan, JP Indonesia. They should not 
other than a Japanese company, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah, Pak Yu. Yep, ya Pak. Boleh komentar? Ya. Yeah. Boleh, boleh Pak. Terima kasih. Yeah, Tapi apa? Seperti tadi Pak Yu khawatirkan bahwa yeah. PT Antam kan BUMN. Benar. Nah ini pengadaannya tidak akan bisa kita mengarah seperti itu ya. Nah. <laughs> Kayaknya kesulitan di situ. Nah, ya, ya, itu mungkin uh, kita lebih baik mengacu ke contoh yang pernah ada. Bapak, ya. mungkin Pak Yo uh, sudah lihat uh, hit recovery sistemnya di Semen Padang. Nah, nah. itu skemnya skem bantuan di situ dan itu bisa berhasil. Itu 6 megawatt uh, PLTU menggunakan exhaust gasnya kiln uh, semen padang. Nah, ini mungkin kita bisa menggunakan itu kalau antam, antam dan semen padang kan sama-sama BUMN. Itu Benar, bisa setuju. dilakukan di sana. Nah, skema uh, itu perlu di, dicontoh, Pak Yud. Ya, uh, maaf Pak Ari, mungkin saya tambahin sedikit. Uh, itu memang dikerjakan sama ya. JP Padang, tapi skemanya waktu itu menggunakan Nedo, Pak. Yang hmm. sama itu dikerjakan itu adalah Tubal. Yang Tubal itu menggunakan JCR. Ya, benar. Kalau konsep pemikirannya kasih, uh, seperti yang Pak Hari sampaikan, mungkin, mungkin Tubal pilihan yang pas. Hmm. Semen, Pak. Itu 28 megawatt. Dulu, ya. kalau nggak salah, yang jadi presiden direkturnya, yang sekarang menjadi kepala SKK Migas. Pak, siapa namanya? Pak ini, Pak Dwi. Pak Dwi ah, Sudik. Ya. Jadi Pak Dwi dulu adalah presiden direkturnya ketika memutuskan untuk menjalankan WSI di Semen Padang. Itu Pak Dwi itu waktu itu presiden Semen Indonesia. Tapi beliau sudah ya. jadi kepala SKK, mungkin beliau lebih banyak tahu juga itu. Karena beliau yang buat decision-nya, Pak Dwi. Ya. Ya. Oke, okay, itu Bu, kira-kira apa? kita harus mengarah ke sana, dan hmm. ini harus diskusikan ke Antam sebelum ini berjalan. Karena kalau skim kita yang sekarang kita jalan, nanti bisa tidak efektif kalau hmm. arahannya menggunakan CCM. Oke. Okay. Um, shall I speak in Indonesian or English? Makasih. Yo, is, uh, is English okay, Pak? Uh, okay, Pak. Okay. Uh, really? okay, so thank you very much for the... Uh, so we have a concern related to JCM uh, on the study for PT Antam. However, uh, uh, just a reminder that this is not official yet between BUPT yep. and PT Antam. So this is just a, how to say, um, just an informal discussion between us and JFE. So maybe later in the future when we have a meeting uh, with PT Antam, we can deliver this to them uh, so that they also concern. As far as I know, they uh, already include JCM as part of the, like, um, so BBPT as a how to say BBPT support uh, PT Antam to uh, to propose this project to the project to JCM. However, this is again not official yet. So um, maybe we can discuss uh, later in the future with PT Antam together. Yeah, Pak Hari. Yeah, betul bu. Okay, so related to. Since you mentioned a lot about JCM, maybe um, from JFE, can you share to us uh, about maybe success story or challenges related to uh, JCM project? Or... Sure, sure. Yeah. We could. Uh, we already have, uh, the, you know, the biggest uh, WHR project in Indonesia itself. Mm -hmm. So we could probably share some story. The Cementuban project. Cementuban? Yes. Um... So yeah, tell us more about it. Yeah. So Cementuban is one of the largest 
if not the largest cement wasted recovery project implemented mm -hmm. it's a 30 megawatt output gross output and this project was implemented under the jcm scheme mm -hmm. where J japan took up the um, role of both the technology implementation that is the epc mm -hmm. um of course within the epc uh, uh, a lot of the construction work was done by the client. Uh, JFE's role was uh, limited mainly to the technology component. Hmm. Um, and they also facilitated the JCM subsidy mm -hmm. for cement to buy. Okay. So in this, in this case, um, so it's not JFE who proposed to J JCM, right? Because what I, uh, what I understand a little bit about JCM is that it should be a Japanese company who registered to submit. Yeah, so JFE is the Japanese company. I meant JFE Japan. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this project was implemented this, by JFE Japan. Uh, so for this one, for cement to cement to ban, was it JFE who also proposed to JCM? Yes. Uh, yes. To, oh, okay. Yes, so, yes, yes. I see. So we have so, two we, roles. Mm, two roles. Yes. Yes. So designed by Japan, um, also construct some in Indonesia by Indonesia. So very big. This is around 30 megawatt. If let's say 1.5 million or 2 million per I reach more than 50 million. The big daddy US dollar. Okay. okay. I want to go back. Okay, so I want to go back to the concern that you mentioned, Pak Yul. So have you have experience working with state-owned company? I'm not sure what is this, Tete Semantuban is private company or private company, right? Uh, no, Semantuban is, uh, yeah, it's a state-owned company. It is in, under in case, Indonesia. Yeah, so in that case, you successfully uh, implement JCM scheme. In 2000, it was 2014. Yes, and then commissioning in 2019. So in that case, there was no problem between, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a state-owned company to have JCM scheme. So you have experience working no. with state-owned company in JCM scheme. Yeah, right? yeah. We have, um, you know, success story, like you said. Uh, mm -hmm. In cement Indonesia, cement to ban. But mm -hmm. if we talk about how detail of stand on company mm -hmm. uh, initiate until completion, I think uh, yes. cement Indonesia have more knowledge on this. In that side, in their side, yes, we are doing that uh, wasted recovery, right? Mm -hmm. But we are not in the government side. Mm -hmm. The government side still cement Indonesia, right? How they proceed of the paperwork, budget requests, and so on is, uh, is done by the cement Indonesia. We we cannot see their kitchen detail, right? We still stand in our position. Mm -hmm. But yes, we have successfully delivered this using JCM scheme, direct appointment, mm -hmm. and then completely done. Finish. Okay. Uh, that that was our concern here. I see. How how the PPT can can support for that portion? Because at the end we cannot jump to their kitchen to to ask to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that that is an example. I mean. Right. And as far as I know. In, in the feasibility study, there is a team who work on JCM. I mean, helping Pete Antam to uh, propose the project to uh, JCM. But of course, because JCM is not a certain thing, right? We don't know if we will get accepted, approved or not, right? So it's still, uh, we just propose, but we don't know if it will uh, be approved or not. And then, uh, so you mentioned, Pak Yul, uh, what you mean is that state-owned company, they have their own rules and regulations and how they manage the, uh, the if, if it's possible for them to do the direct appointment or not. 
that is what we don't know about the phantom, right? I am trying to understand the 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 issue here. Yeah, right? uh, we don't know how Antam can manage, but okay. in fact, uh, Semen Indonesia have done this successfully. I mean, mm. direct appointment to JCM J, J, JFE for in 2014 uh, yeah. project, and then we complete in 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but just for your information, as again, as far as I know, since this is not official yet, the scope yep. of the study is just uh, helping or supporting in the JCM, uh, but not, as far as I know, it's not including selection of the company who will do yep, yep. PC yet. So what we will do is, like Pahari mentioned, is the basic engineering, the design, the uh, economy, uh, techno economy evaluation, and then some recommendations related to technical economy and JCM. So yep. um, related to the selection of who will do the EPC, I, uh, as far as I know, it's not included yet. But however, we'll see if yeah, uh, because that right. is something that BBBT can do as well. So it's a good thing to uh, discuss with you so we know. Uh, about uh, JFE as one of EPC companies. Okay, so um, um, it's almost 3 p.m. Usually we, we do this seminar until around 3 p.m. However, I'm pretty flexible and I think I let the uh, Bapak dan Ibu to, uh, to give uh, comments or questions if you have some, uh, especially to those who work uh, or some experience maybe in waste heat recovery technology. Or anything, anything about JFE, if you would like to know more. Mm. Um, okay, no, you can uh, raise your hand and, and just talk directly. I mean, click raise hand and then talk. <laughs> Hello, Novi. Yeah, Ibu. Silakan, Bu. Uh, BPPT yeah. kan pernah experience me mengejapan uh, pembangunan, ya. Pembangunan. Yeah. Uh, call upgrading, mm -hmm. call upgrading plan dalam hal yeah. ini di uh, PLN milik PLN di Aceh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cara spesifik, yeah. uh, teknologi yang paling bisa diandalkan atau paling mungkin untuk dipakai adalah dari Jepang, Jepang mm -hmm. Jepang company teknologi mm. Mm. itu yang menurut kami terbaik tetapi PLN ini kan tidak punya tidak pernah melakukan investasi teknologi baru mm. nah jadi walaupun kita bisa melihat hal itu sangat memberikan keuntungan kepada mm. PLN namun ini tidak bisa diimplementasikan karena tidak ada yang investasi Sampai saat ini pun BPLN tidak menunjukkan untuk melakukan investasi. Karena itu hmm. Hmm. kita sebagai BPLN itu ingin investigasi atau cari tahu lah apakah yang bisa BSE uh, 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 kontribusikan dalam masalah ini. Apakah hmm. apakah ada uh, kemungkinan untuk berinvestasi atau seperti apa syarat-syarat. Nah, karena kalau dilihat dari segi teknologi kelihatannya yang paling mungkin memang justru teknologi yang dari Jepang ini mm -hmm. yaitu barang kaki okay. ini untuk pengeringan batu bara muda batu bara peringkat rendah yang belum pernah dilakukan di Indonesia untuk PLTI ya yeah. okay. itu ya dari saya makasih ya yeah. Terima kasih, Ibu Yus. Um, may I uh, interpret, uh, translate a little bit? Um, Pak Yul, saya terjemahkan dulu sedikit mungkin ya. Atau boleh mau respon dalam bahasa Indonesia aja langsung? Atau uh, saya, saya agak putus-putus tadi. Apa pertanyaannya, Bu? Oh, jadi, um, oke, okay, in English. <laughs> um, so, uh, Ibu, Ibu Yus Nitati, she is one of our experts in coal, coal upgrading technology. So, the okay. question is that, um, in coal upgrading uh, technology, when we want to implement, it is actually very potential, right? And one of the potential uh, implementation or location is the steam power plant uh, belongs to PLM, uh, Indonesian Electricity Company in Aceh. That is just one of the examples. So, but usually the problem is that this company, which is state-owned company, they cannot uh, or they don't want to invest for new technology. 
so in this case, uh, EPC company like JSE, can you also do investments uh, to implement some new technology? And this technology called upgrading is to upgrade the quality of a low quality coal that can be used for steam power plant. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, uh, let me try to answer, but so me, I'll correct me if if my explanation not really right. So uh, JFE basically for certain field we do investment hmm. uh, in Japan, not in Indonesia or outside of Indonesia. Oh. But most of if we talk about investment, that must be a green. The the consider because JV is a consider sustainability. So we talk about, for example, um, maybe uh, for example, what, 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 what uh, geothermal in Japan, maybe. But I think my personal mm. if coal, mm. Japan or JV would not put this asperity mm. because we consider coal, mm. you know, so really environment friendly mm. at what we concern. But again, similar like we said recovery case. Even Antam or whatever, whoever company, the beside if we talk about the fund, beside the subsidy from um, the Japan government, they say they talk about 20 percent. Uh, we also have other choice. You know, uh, there is SMI, right? For Indonesia government that can provide the fund um, from Menteri Keuangan Department, I guess. Mm. Or even we have third party company that can be a lender. So they own the waste heat facility. And then Antam or whatever company want to own the project, may need to pay um, annually or depend on what is the electricity produced. Nah, jadi, bisa saja gitu loh. Oh, kemudian disewakan ke pemilik, disewakan ke antam. Biaya mungkin bisa dari SMP digabung sama JCM, digabung sama third party. Itu kan pilihan menurut saya. Ya. We can choose it. But again, as I mentioned to you, but certain company Sorry, cert, yeah, certain company like JB, we don't put more of the coal. So, am I correct? Or is that, is that, I, uh, yeah. No, no, you're absolutely correct. Um, as Pakyol correctly stated, mm -hmm. we are into green technology. Mm -hmm. And in that, uh, depending on the opportunity, depending on the scope, we may consider investing mm -hmm. or we definitely can look at facilitating investors. We have a very good network with investors uh, in Indonesia itself. So for green projects like waste recovery power plants, mm. we can either invest ourselves or facilitate the investment. It's very project specific. Okay. Thank you. So um, we we'll use um Perlu saya tambahkan dijelaskan atau sudah? Oke, okay, Bu. Bu Yus. Saya kira sudah cukup. Cukup ya, Bu. Ya. ya, terima kasih, Bu. Menarik sekali. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, 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 it's issue related to the investment. Uh, who, who uh, if JFE can do or cannot do investment. And yeah, you mentioned that you are focusing more on green technology. Yeah. Okay, so this brings me to the uh, the other uh, technology. How about Kome Biogas? You also have some biogas project, right? Can you share to us also about that? Yeah, uh, uh, Boots, actually we are being approached by two, three company to talk about, it, this is not related directly to our colleague in, in PC India, mm -hmm. but there's two, three company here in Indonesia ask us to support um, technology things from Pome, yeah, palm oil mill affluence yeah. to be CNG gas. Mm. Yeah, we we talk with our headquarters in Japan because there's a chance also to have um, JCM. But the problem is um, 
um, typically the size that they have here is very small. I know that you have done this in, in Riau. Mm. Um, the size is one megawatt, two megawatt. Yeah. Uh, for JFE, for that size, one or two megawatt, it's not worth it. Mm. It's too small for us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we ask, do you have a team or do you have anyone that can share later, not now, maybe it's time limited, maybe how you construct your uh, POME plan mm. in ENG in Riau province. So at least we can see from the other perspective, it sound possible even to consider this um, to the next um, possibility also to JCM. That's what we concern so far. So we can't declare yet for the name of the uh, company, but we have in our head, we talked already for the past three months, hmm. um, around three until eight locations who have the pomi change to CNG gas. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So th that's what we have for information. But for waste recovery, we openly, because we have we have approached uh, Antam first cement plan here of two years. So mm -hmm. now it's going to talk with them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So do you have like my minimum scale? Do you think that is worth it? Yeah. Uh, the problem with us uh, because uh, very big. Um, at least I think beyond above five or six megawatt is still possible. But less than five six megawatts is not competitive enough for us to do the job. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Uh, maybe my colleagues here can give some comments uh, because as, as I know, one palm oil mill, maybe maximum can have around, I don't know, two or three megawatts. Yeah, uh, yes. so in that case, you need to have, I don't yeah. know, then one palm oil mill is not sufficient, right? No, not enough. But yeah. even if you have more than one palm oil mills, each of them have to have a biogas uh, facility. So still, uh, I mean, if even if you have more than two or three bio, uh, palm oil mills all uh, producing biogas, uh, it's still, right? Because it, you have to build one by one, right? Yeah. Each of them. Yeah, the problem is, uh, uh, especially most of the palm oil is in Kalimantan Island, right? Mm. Uh, the problem is uh, transportation, the distance from one palm mill to the others is quite far the distance. That's why we want to know if you have experience build one to make a one, how you how you build it and how, how much it will be the cost. Um, is it some possible to combine instead of one palm oil to be you know like maybe six until eight palm oil to be uh, once one sign but different location. You know? Different areas so you can buy, you know, um, equipment one single time together instead of just one one palm oil. You can proceed six mm. until eight location together. So like a program instead of project. That might be quite challenging because usually palm oil mills are you know far away from one to another. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But there's yeah. a problem, but the yeah. client asked me, they're, they're very mm. big uh, palm oil company. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think Kalimantan they have maybe I think hundred thousand hectare, hundred twenty hectare. I don't know. Mm. Very big. Mm. That's why I want to know how your your mm. technology, how you can make it in uh, Riau. Mm. Uh, I, I I read you have done this in Riau for um, mm. for me to CNG. Yeah. So especially for BBPT, um, uh, we our job is to implement new technology. One of our job is that. So some, um, most of what we build by ourselves is a pilot plan. So it's uh, uh, especially when oh. it's very new technology. So it's still a, a small, maybe for you, it's a small scale because we uh, build the pilot plan first. Uh, one of the proposals is to show the examples. So then uh, other, for example, private 
companies or other uh, organization can develop uh, the same or, or copy the same technology somewhere else in a bigger scale. So some most of our work are pilot plants, maybe in a smaller scale, like the one we have uh, in uh, Riau. Actually, I have the pictures on the maybe just to show you. I, I did I show you or not? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe here we, I can show you. Oh, Just, uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we, of course, we have no enough, not enough time today to talk a lot. Yeah. This is this, uh, this, uh, brief description about the technology we have. The first one we have Papua Lagoon technology in uh, Terantam in uh, Riau Province. We collaborate with PPPN5, and here among us we have the team working uh, on this. And then this one, they already utilizing the electricity they obtain, uh, they generate from this biogas. Uh, so that it can save uh, some saving uh, for their electricity expenses, which is very helpful, I believe, for the PTPN5. Um, and uh, the second one, uh, that what I was talking is the first one on the left, Pava Lagoon technology. We use it to generate electricity. And then the second one is on the right hand, this one, CSTR. We use different technology. As I mentioned, we want to implement new technology so we, we can compare between the Cover Lagoon and the CSTR. So in this case, we, we only built the half of the capacity, half of the total capacity. You know, it's sometimes because of the budget and some other issues. So we only help build, develop the half, half size for now. But hopefully in the future, we will develop another house so it can be full capacity. So this one we use CSDR, uh, which may be more, uh, uh, how to say, can be controlled uh, uh, better uh, this compared to Cover Lagoon. And then we are now studying the, the, the how to say, the result uh, using this technology. And in this case, the utilization is different. This one, we use the biogas to uh, for co-firing in boiler to uh, replace or substitute some uh, biomass or what is it? Uh, shell, palm shell. So they can save some of their palm shell. Hopefully they can sell the excess of palm shell more so they can get more profit by selling the uh, palm shell that they save uh, because they use biogas. Uh, the, yeah, so, um, so this is, oh, this is more pictures of it. This, uh, uh, the one in Cabo Lagoon. Uh, and then this one, the second one, is the CSTR technology. So yeah, uh, that is just to add you some more info. Um, if you have more questions related to biogas, or maybe uh, my colleagues, my senior, who want to add more comments related to biogas, please, if you if you want to. Pak Pras, maybe, or anyone? Pak pa Sam, nggak ada ya? Pak Samuel, nggak ada ya? Anyway, so yeah. Um, is there uh, any uh, other? Yeah, it's okay. Um, we may need to talk uh, later again okay, because uh, the times, number one, number two, I think this pandemic also it strict us. There's a problem. We cannot cannot come and visit client for the past one year. Right, <laughs> it's a, right. Yeah, so very constrained for us. But uh, is that for the PT PN fund mm. by themselves or they oh. use a third party? So we have so we have two projects, right? The first one, the Cover Lagoon, is funded by PPPT ourselves. So we have, of course, from the from the country. I mean, from the government, we receive the funding, and then we develop the first one in uh, using Cover Lagoon technology. And the second one, also by government, but not PPPT uh, directly. But it's from Ministry of Research and Technology. Uh, uh -huh. And yeah, and then we, as I mentioned in the in the, in the beginning, that sometimes we also uh, propose some proposal to other funding organizations, so do, with that our uh, activities can be supported. In this case, uh, maybe uh, Mbak Winda or any other can add uh, can correct if I'm wrong. Uh, it's funded by LPDP, Pak. LPDP. Uh, LPDP itu berarti belongs to apa ya? Ministry of Finance, I'm not sure. So sometimes we also, you know, get the funding from other organization to continue our project. I see. The, so the other part they also pro can propose to uh, Ministry of Finance Indonesia for such a, a project budget, isn't it? Yeah, it's so the government sometimes uh, the government themselves, the ministry have like special program to to do some funding. For example, okay. 
green green technology funding or some other things. I see. Um, yeah, we can work. It. And most of our work, we work with our. Uh, we have to have our partners. It can be private company. It can be local government. It can be owner of the facility, for example, like PTPN. Uh, we as BPPT, our project, uh, our work uh, are focusing on implementation stage. So, which means we it's impossible for us to do everything alone by ourselves. So we have to have partners. So in this case, JFE maybe in the future can have uh, uh, can have a, a collaboration with uh, private companies like JFE. I see. Right. Okay. So, oh, one last question from me. Um, I'm curious. Do you always register your project to JC? That no. no, 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 not necessarily. That's just an added benefit and value that JFE brings, but it's not necessary that it's always via JCM. We are perfectly open and uh, eager to conduct business just on a purely commercial, um, you know, EPC contractor, heavy buyer relationship. Okay, so that brings me to another question. Um, to have a just successful JCM project or to get approved, frankly saying, what is actually the main important uh, that we have to prepare on the project? Well, I mean, uh, size plays a role. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, frankly, this is a very subjective issue. Um, it is based on the submission by the applicant, which is in this case, maybe JFE or any other Japanese company. Um, typically projects which have a significant environmental impact where there is a significant reduction in the amount of CO2. Uh, those are the kind of projects that obviously um, have a greater uh, chance of passing muster at the Japanese Ministry of Environment. But to be quite honest, there is no clear cut defined uh, parameter that this is what is going to get you there and or, or get you rejected. It's a very subjective issue uh, dependent on so many factors, but see a size and amount of CO2 reduction definitely plays a very, very vital role. But besides that, there is a limit per year, isn't it? Yeah, how many how many million how many million US dollars I forgot per year is Pac, actually that 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 varies from year to year oh, I see but typically like for example uh, of course I'm sure as I've been said that typically JCM funds up to 40 percent in Indonesia it'll be uh, now 30 percent because already one project has been funded so up to 30% of the technology component is funded as a subject. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Uh, but so the government Japan also have a limit for budget that they provide for SEM per year, right? I mean, I forgot, maybe. Yes, yes, there is a limit. Limit, every, right? year, every year they define that limit mm -hmm. and the subsidy is evaluated maybe every year like yes, think, yes, right? yes. Yeah. yeah so yes. Uh, in some cases when it's it doesn't work like it has to be maybe then the subsidy will be stopped mm -hmm. not stopped it's just that they, but you're right they evaluate it every year mm -hmm. so they have the funds and they make a call for the subsidy. I think typically around April, the calls go up. And between May and November, the applications are made. And depending on how fast they award, uh, funds are used up. Once the funds are used up, that's it. The, the applications are closed. Then again, the next year, the same process is repeated. Okay. All right. Um. Already, three. Uh. Three sixteen p.m. Yep. Right now. Um. It seems. <laughs> uh, my, my, myself. I still want to talk more, but then I think we have to limit the time. Yep, sure, sure. So. Um. Uh, we I have just... um, our coordinates with the Park Hewell, so we are available at any time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if there are any further clarifications that you would need from us, mm -hmm. we'd be very, very happy to provide the same. Yeah. And since Payul already showed himself on a video, finally, <laughs> shall yeah. we take pictures together so that we can keep the pictures as uh, memories? <laughs> So yeah, um, to, uh, it seems most of my colleagues cannot really show uh, their video because some of them uh, have double meeting with other meetings or they uh, are you know, using mobile phone or maybe not uh, enough bandwidth to show the video. So um, please to those, uh, Ibu, Bapak, uh, to you who can show your video, could you please uh, show your beautiful and handsome face? <laughs> because we would like to take pictures so okay now i know which one is pa somia and pa abijit <laughs> nice to see you Hello. okay okay let's wait a little bit before i take a screenshot um pa hands mana pa hands mana pa hands ada pa hands pa hands um can, can, is it possible for you to show your oh okay yeah it's there it's already it's there, there but it's freezing <laughs> but it's okay all right then, let's take a picture. I'll count three, two, five. Smile. One, two, three. Okay, one last. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems I have to Thank you. close this uh, um, discussion or sharing session today. I just want would like to ask if perhaps would do you want to uh, give a closing statement? If you are available, he have another meeting, so maybe he's not available. So, all right, so our director, uh, he is, uh, he has another meeting, so sorry, he cannot give us closing statement. So, let me just close this uh, setting session today. Thank you uh, very much for uh, um, Pak Yul, Pak Somia, and Pak Abijit, and uh, thank you, Pak Agung, yeah. Agung, yeah, yes. from uh, JFE Engineering for uh, joining with us today. It, it's a great pleasure for us to know about JFE and what you've done and then a uh, successful project. You uh, And then you also share about JCM, which is very interesting. And hopefully we can collaborate in the future. We're not sure how and, uh, and, and when, but um, uh, one of them may be uh, the one related to PT Antam, but we are not sure. So <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, I think it's very interesting. Uh, yeah. It's very beneficial um, uh, and informative discussion today, uh, especially to Pak Yul, who already presented his presentation. Um, and we from BBPT, uh, very welcome to you or uh, to uh, our, uh, how to say, to future partners uh, to keep uh, contact with us uh, in case um, maybe we can collaborate, not just about waste heat recovery or home biogas or maybe some other technology, mm -hmm. since we work on energy and chemical industry. So yeah, maybe that's all from me. Thank yeah. you very much uh, for Thank joining, so uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have a good afternoon and then stay healthy. Hi, stay okay. safe, everybody. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.